Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren. And I'm Laurel Lynn Tyler Thompson. Thanks for spending this awesome time with us. Mm -hmm. It is such an honor that you would choose to view the 700 Club Canada. If it's your first time, welcome. And if you're a faithful viewer, thanks for continuing to watch. You're part of our family. Mm -hmm. Our first story is about the changing times of our society. People can now enter a church and cause chaos. Yeah, we're hearing those stories more and more, aren't we, uh, Brian? You know, uh, something hits the news and someone's gone in and there's a gun or something like that. You know, just we have to be vigilant and, you know, careful and keep an eye out, uh, unfortunately, in this day and age. But um, we do trust God that he has got us hemmed in, that he's our security, that no matter what happens, that God is our fortress and our strong tower. I mean, I really pray that over my life. Absolutely, but you know, it's no different in schools and it's no different in churches right now. Yeah. What we thought was just in other parts of the world like the Middle East and different places. I know as a pastor, I've got to be uh, mindful of not only emergency protocols to make sure that people know where the exits are, make mm. sure they're safe and that we're just watching. But the Bible makes it very clear that we're to be as wise as a serpent and as gentle as a mm. dove. So this isn't, an unusual thing, it's to be expected if, if you're going to shepherd and take care of sheep. Yes, it really is. And yeah. in fact, you know, today we'll, we'll be seeing a story coming up here. Mm -hmm. Here's a CBN News feature about a church in Memphis, Tennessee that incurred, encountered a gunman on Easter Sunday. Take a look. Members of Bellevue Baptist Church are counting their blessings after an armed man entered their sanctuary during Easter morning service. About 4,500 people were in the sanctuary for the 11 a.m. service when 31-year-old Marcus Donald arrived. A church hostess noticed a pistol sticking out of his pocket and alerted a church minister who called church security. Bellevue Baptist, one of the largest churches in Memphis with more than 30,000 members, has long been ready for such an event. In 2014, CBN News highlighted Bellevue in a story about church security. The church I went to as a kid only had about 200 people and we knew everybody that came through those doors. But when you've got a church this size, this is almost like a civic center. And it's hard to imagine the challenges that would go with trying to keep this many people safe and keep an eye on everybody at the same time. Andy Willis heads up the security team, which includes more than 100 paid and volunteer staff. Today, churches that speak the truth, that teach and preach true biblical principles, they draw a lot of attention because there are a lot of uh, components of society today that don't want to hear that, that are absolutely against that. As a church security team, we have to be prepared for those kinds of situations to intervene and to protect the flock. Willis said the church also relies on state-of-the-art cameras. A camera system that constantly monitors and records activities on campus is extremely important. They're not very expensive, and the thing that you get is you get the protection in a liability situation that you won't have if you don't have it. Police said Donald told them, quote, people in society are a threat to him and that he must be vigilant. Clearly, he uh, was disturbed a little bit. Uh, I'm not a doctor, have no idea what the diagnosis for him is. But he certainly had the potential to do a lot of, you know, really bad stuff. Members are thankful that no one was hurt. Everything was all right in there. I didn't, nothing went on in, inside yeah, the sanctuary. Okay. Everything was okay. I heard a disruption in the church, didn't hear anything about uh, anyone being armed. Well, it's bad. The pastor said we had a disturbance. Meanwhile, Donald, whose mother attends the church, was arrested without incident, and police are continuing their investigation. On Twitter, church leaders posted, nobody was injured. Praise the Lord for his protection. Willis said, Christians need to trust God, but be prepared. The biggest thing that makes me cringe whenever I speak to other churches about security is they will say, we don't have security. We're just praying that nothing happens. The day before the incident, members also held a prayer rally for protection over the church. Just like every Saturday, uh, a very large group of people showed up here and prayed over uh, every seat in the sanctuary, uh, prayed over the hallways and the classrooms and uh, we, you know we, we we prayed for for souls to be reached i mean we prayed for the message of christ to get out 
Um, uh, additionally, I mean, these individuals that come every week faithfully, uh, led by our pastor, Steve Gaines, prayed for safety. Uh, we prayed that uh, no harm would come to this place. Prayers that were heard and answered. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. You know, it's interesting. Uh, they said that uh, churches that preach the truth and uh, that are standing on the word of God, people mm. don't want to hear it today. Right. And therefore, it becomes controversial. Yes. Yeah. Truth is controversial these days. <laughs> you know, never before has, you know, the right side up been upside down yeah, like but, it is today. But, you know, the... Uh, the Bible makes it very clear mm. in the in the last days that there are going to be uh, people to be lovers of themselves, right. boastful and proud, and haters of what is good. But at the same time, it says, "Look up for your salvation draweth near now than when you first believed." Mm. And we may be nice. the generation, and I believe the generation that will welcome the, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, in the flesh. Mm. And so we've got to live ready. I I like that. I that's encouraging. You know and. You know, sometimes with this persecution that happens, we join together. Look at the good things. You know, how yes. the people of God come together and we fight for truth when we're faced with that. You're absolutely right. Hmm. Coming up, we meet a self-professed warlock. <laughs> Prayer is a communication with God. It's a powerful exchange between God and man. We're going to answer many of your questions in answered prayer how to pray effectively and see God work in your life. In Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Answered Prayer, you'll learn the biblical principles of prayer and how to get your prayers answered and hear miraculous stories of answers to prayer from Pat's own faith-filled journey. We share some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. Plus, you'll see dramatic, true stories of life-changing answers to prayer. God proves himself time and time again. He's in the room with us, answering people's prayers. I think I survived because God has a bigger plan for my life. The doctor was just like, I've never seen anything like this before. And he hears your prayers. I never saw this coming. Every great work of God is preceded by prayer. Answered Prayer how to pray effectively and see God work in your life. Available now. Stephen Beatty was a self-professed warlock. As a Wiccan, he cast spells and had several dark demonic encounters. His trek to the dark side began in 2001 when his girlfriend had a miscarriage. When it didn't work out and the baby was still born, I was completely crushed. I had no idea where to go, where to turn. I couldn't think. All I could think about was how badly and how much I wanted this child. Stephen blamed God for his baby's death. It pushed me away from God because somebody told me that God had a reason for taking this child. And I thought, I don't want to have any part in a God who will take a child from somebody who wants it. Partly due to the miscarriage, his relationship with his girlfriend ended. Stephen was totally broken. He turned to drinking and drugs to mask the anger in his soul. I started getting into cocaine and prescription drugs, painkillers, antidepressants, and stuff like that. Stephen said he felt like an outcast until he entered the world of goth. That's where he met and married Dottie, who had two girls from a previous marriage. They didn't care what I was doing, they didn't care what I looked like, and they didn't care how I acted. I remember wearing two to three inch spikes around my neck, three, four inch spikes on my wrist. Stephen, Dottie, and their goth friends also participated in intricate role-playing games. They had different roles like vampires, werewolves, a mage, which was a witch. They had what they called dark angels. And that opened the door to something even darker, the occult. At first, I didn't want anything to do with it, but the more I hung out and the more I was there, I think I started searching for some kind of religious stability because I needed a set of beliefs to live by and I didn't want to change my life. So Wicca kind of fit the bill at the time. The Wiccan rituals and spells opened him up to what he calls demonic encounters one day at his home, Stephen and some friends noticed an object, a knife, moving on its own. 
it started spinning and nobody was touching it. And one of my friends looked at me, he said, did you see that? And I said, yes. And everybody that was in the house left. Months later, he had an encounter he would never forget. In the dead center of my room, there was a dark figure just kind of sitting like cross-legged. It was just sitting there looking at me, levitated off the floor. It gives you chills. And it was really scary. Stephen was terrified when he saw the power of Satan. He knew his life needed to change. Then one day while attending his stepdaughter's soccer practice, he met another dad, a pastor who invited him to church. I said, I'm gonna tell you why I don't go to church. I said, I'm a witch. I believe in Wicca. And he just looked, he looks at me and he says, well, how's that working out for you? And I said, not too good. The pastor gave him a Bible and Stephen began reading. And then on Easter Sunday, he went to church to see his stepdaughter sing in the choir. That was the day his life totally changed. It was just the music, the songs, and just the message. It was just the way the story of Christ was laid out that it really, it really made me understand that, that I needed Christ in my life and that I was a sinner. Stephen began to pray. I told God that I knew that I was wrong in the way that I lived, that everything about my life was wrong and I needed forgiveness and just wanted Jesus, I just wanted Christ in my heart and in my life. It was an overnight change. I had already given up almost everything from my past. I was still drinking, but it was like overnight. I didn't want to drink anymore. My language cleared up. Just the way that I carried myself, it was an overnight change. Others saw the change in Stephen too. Pastor Nate Blackledge explains. Anytime you talk to him, it just seems like the, the number one thing on his heart is what he can do to be used by God, to see God do a work in not necessarily his own life, but anybody's life that he comes in contact with. It's, it's amazing. Stephen and Dottie have since had a child of their own. They're amazed at all that God has done for their family. Without his grace and his mercy, I wouldn't be here now. I just don't believe that I would have made it through what I've come through without him. God is my strong tower. I find my strength in Him. Without Him, I am nothing. When you look at Stephen's life, he said something that was so poignant there. And, and, I, and I wrote it down. He said, I started searching for some kind of religious stability. That's why he went into the occult. He said, I didn't want anything to do with it. And then he found out that he was so deep in, he couldn't get out. I'm talking to someone right now. There have been some doors that have been shutting in your house. There have been a lot of paranormal things that have been happening. Let me tell you, if it comes from the bottom, it is demonic. If it comes from above, it is divine. And God has not, this isn't the first time that this happened in the church. The Bible says something in Acts of the Apostles. And it says, when they went into uh, to a place called Samaria, it says in, in the 14th through the 18th, and I want you to read it all for you yourself. But it says there was a sorcerer there and his name was Simon. And he saw that the Holy Spirit came by the laying on of hands. And he said, I want to buy that power. You know, that's what the enemy of our soul constantly does. And that's what people want to do. New age means anything beyond the cross and believing in all sorts of things. What you believe in literally will determine whether you will rise or where you fall. And whoever controls you has the right to beat you or also love you when he wants to. Jesus Christ, he is the power. He said, all authority and power have been given to me. I'm going to pray in the Holy Spirit, but I want to get something to you because if, if, if you've been trying to get loose, the occult is real, but I want you to know that Jesus has all power and you are complete in Christ Jesus, according to Colossians 2.10. I want to pray with you. I want you to ball your hands up right now because God can't feel full hands. But I'm going to pray in the Spirit and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to fill your room and fill your heart right now. But then after that, I want you to call the number on the screen because this is your time to get out. This is your bailout plan. 
Father, Roko Sokora Basandirian Dorobo. Father, I know in the name of Jesus, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit. So I declare the Lord who chose Jerusalem rebuke you, Satan. As that person says, I open my heart to Jesus right now. Now open your hands. Now in that moment, Holy Spirit, Ruah Akodesh, flood into their lives in the name of Jesus. Make them into a new person in Jesus' name. If you receive that, call the number on the screen. Don't play with it because you know there is power. You've been dabbling with Ouija boards. You've been dabbling with the, with the horoscopes and everything else. But now it's time for you to go all in with Jesus. Wow. After the break, from Fortune 500 to the uh, for Fortune 500 to the Bible, find out why Ron changed his life. Man, I'm so excited what God's doing for you. Ron DeCiani is a renowned artist whose paintings have appeared at the Moscow Olympics and have hung in galleries, offices, and museums around the world. He's been hired by the biggest names in publishing and advertising, including best-selling author Frank Peretti and Max Lucado. But he's probably best known for his painting, Spiritual Warfare, which has sold tens of millions of prints globally. Then, Ron DeCiani was commissioned to paint the largest mural of the resurrection, 12 feet high by 40 feet wide, which took him two years to complete. The mural is now framed and hangs in the Museum of Biblical Art in Dallas, Texas. The resurrection mural has been named one of the top 100 pieces of fine art in the world. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the single act in history that separates Christianity from every other religion, every other philosophy, and every other belief system. When I was commissioned to do that, my first thing was to immediately go to scripture, to try to understand this deep significance of the resurrection. And God gave me this incredible idea of having Christ emerge from the tomb, which I've never seen done before. I wanted to stop a moment in time when he grabbed the sides of the tomb and walked out. If you look at Christ, on his belt are the keys of death and hell. Christ is the central theme of the painting. However, we have a cast of characters. The first on either side of Christ are Moses and Elijah. They are the same ones that met Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. Behind Moses is David, a man after God's own heart. He is one of the three people in the painting that are royalty, that know to kneel before the King of Kings. Isaiah promised us the counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. He gets to see him with his very own eyes. Behind Isaiah is Abraham, the father of nations, gets to see the one who brings all of those to heaven. On the other side of Christ, Elijah, who was transported to heaven without dying, Noah now knows all that he went through for 120 years was worth it. Between Noah and Elijah, you'll see up above a dove flying past the rocks, the symbol of the Holy Spirit who literally raised him from the dead. Queen Esther, who was willing to perish, now sees the one who was willing to give up his life. Behind Esther is John the Baptist, who at one point in his life wondered, is he really the one? Now he gets to watch him walk out of the tomb. So he knows he's the one. In back of him, again kneeling, is Daniel. Royalty again, Daniel was a governor. If you look at the far right corner of the painting, you'll see Mount Calvary, also known as the place of the skull or Golgotha. That's where Jesus was crucified. And above the three crosses in the distance, you'll see a rainbow. 
Christ, the angels, and the guards are all totally physically represented at that moment. However, the cloud of witnesses on either side are all transparent at some point because they're in another dimension. Looking back at Christ, you'll see that there are special cracks right around his head, symbolically forming the crown of thorns he wore. And I wanted to sum it all up by his gaze upward of looking to the Father and saying, I did it. Because of this moment, pictured in the resurrection mural of Christ conquering the grave, we now become heirs and joint heirs with him, with the ability of accepting him as the Lord and Savior who rose from the dead to have eternal life. What an incredible story. You know, there's always a story behind the story. And uh, the God story is the best story. And in, in the Word of God, it talks about in all our ways, acknowledging Him. This is Proverbs 3, 6. And trusting God, and He will make our paths straight, leaning not on our own understanding. And, you know, no matter what gift we have in life, this is our calling. God asks us to trust in Him. Whether you're gifted to be a painter or a singer or an accountant, my favorite, you know, or whether God has given you, you know, a gift to just create beauty in your home. That is a beautiful thing. But God always requires of all of us that we would trust in him, that our salvation would be in God. God plus us makes a great life. If we eliminate the God factor, that's where we run into trouble. And some of you out there, you might have some real skills and talents, but if you haven't received the power of the living God into your life, the power of Jesus Christ, can I tell you something? You're missing the power best part. You're missing the main ingredient, the ingredient that makes you go from, you know, really good at something to spectacular because God's power in your life makes everything better. We would love to send this out to you. This tract is called A Certain Salvation. It lets you know some interesting and amazing information about our Lord and Savior. one 855 700 You know what? It's all about what we do with Jesus. This Jesus who wants to be part of our life, who wants to love us and care for us. What are we going to do with that man called Jesus? Is he going to be our Lord? That's the question that he asks you today. Well, we're going to close the show with a prayer time coming up next, so don't go away. Inside every child is a hero, a leader, a friend to others, someone who helps out, who does the right thing, who dreams of what they can be, but they still need our help. What should I do? What should I say? How should I feel? That's where Superbook comes in. It provides moral and spiritual truths through situations <laughs> children can relate to, teaching God's Word to the children you love. Join the Superbook DVD Club and receive Superbook's newest episodes as they're available, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Get Superbook today and watch the miracles happen. Welcome back. We have a special offer for you. It's our newest DVD called Answered Prayer. Mm, in this powerful new DVD, Pat Robertson teaches us how to pray effectively mm -hmm. so we can see God work in remarkable ways. Now, Pat also shares his own story about answered prayers and trusting God as well. Mm, give us a call now, 1-855-759-0700. Become a monthly partner and we'll send you answered prayer right away. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your prayer request as well as your praise reports. You know, this whole program, I've been feeling the power of God uh, yes. and some of the testimonies that we've been talking about and as yes. people have been battling with different things. I really have been compelled to pray for you today. And would you put on your prayer list as well? We've got Donna from Barrie, Ontario. She's praying for healing from an issue in her daughter's body. Mm -hmm. And Teresa from Innisfil, 
full recovery for Jim after a heart attack. Yes, let's touch mm. and agree. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for uh, Teresa's request. God, we just pray and come into agreement for the healing of Jim. We ask you that you would touch his body, that you would restore uh, his heart, and that you would uh, literally infuse the cells in his body, O oh God, and that you would give him strength and restore everything, O oh God, that has been taken. We thank you, Jesus, that you are our healer. We thank you that you heal even today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for Donna. And Lord, I just see a mother, like the Syrophoenician woman, because she wants her daughter healed, and she's reaching out in every direction, and she's called these lines. So now we touch and agree with Donna for the healing of her daughter's body, and we plead your blood upon her life, and we ask you, Lord, that you would raise her up, that you would strengthen her, and that you would also, Lord, give her a future and a hope. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, this whole time, Laura Lynn, uh, especially when we were talking about the occult earlier, I've been feeling that God is saying that it's time for you to come out, whatever you have been in. I have not sensed this same anointing mm -hmm. in, a, in a good while on this, this, this ministry, where it's just to come against that and declare mm -hmm. whatever you have been bound by, whom the Son makes free, is free indeed. Mm -hmm. If you're not getting that prayer from your church and your pastor or wherever it is, you need that right now because Jesus came to set the captives free yeah. and he came to heal, deliver, and say, today you can be healed, but you got to believe it. Grab it. Call the number on the screen. Mm, that is so good. You know, the word of God says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, yes. rulers in high places. And so that wrestling, that's real. You know, sometimes we have earthly issues, but that wrestling, that's real. And so, Brian, I appreciate uh, that prayer that, uh, that you had over that. Yeah. You know, we want to leave you with a power verse and uh, hold on to this. We pray that this hour, this, this time has truly transformed you. But hold on to this. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Acts 4 and 12. Until next time. God, God bless. bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.